Hey guys, it's John Rips. Welcome to another in-depth tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about guerrilla operations, how to spawn them, how to attempt them, how to skip them, and so on. Hey guys, Future Steven here. I just want to say all of the information for this video is coming from the x2 strategy element underscore default alien activities dot uc file and the activities dot ini file. And you can find those in your mod folder if you want to work out where all the numbers are coming from yourself. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the video. So in past videos, I've talked about detecting missions, but I haven't really talked about where those missions came from exactly. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to lay the groundwork for that with an understanding of guerrilla operations, which are sort of the heart and soul of Long War II missions. And up on screen right now, I have the six different types of activities which are classed with the general ops spawn condition in the game code, which basically means these are the guerrilla ops. Um, we've got protect data, troop maneuvers, high value prisoner, political prisoners, logistics, and propaganda. And each of those is tied to certain types of missions you can discover, which it decides on randomly when it's created. So you can see political prisoners is always a jailbreak, but if you get a protect data activity, that could be five different things. Hey guys. So up on screen right now, I have a spreadsheet readout for the activity propaganda. We've got all sorts of cool information here. The basic spawn conditions, talking about min and max alert. That's how much advent strength is in the region. So this can spawn in a region with one advent strength, seven advent strength, but it can't spawn in a region with nine advent strength or higher. Min and max vigilance is talking about vigilance, which is a hidden mechanic. And as you complete missions in a region, vigilance goes up basically by one for each mission you complete more or less. And every week, Vigilance goes down by one in the region. So you can sort of keep track of where Vigilance is by keeping an eye on how many missions you've beaten. You can also tell based on what sort of stuff is spawning once you know the Vigilance restrictions. So Propaganda is never going to spawn in a region with more than six Vigilance in it. So if you see Propaganda, you know that Vigilance is lower than seven. Priority is, we don't really need to get into that. All of these guerrilla ops have 55 priority, and that means that when they're trying to spawn, it randomizes which one tries to spawn first. Force modifier and alert modifier, again, not in use for any of these guerrilla ops, but some missions in the game increase the force level of aliens. That's like the research, so what sorts of enemies can show up on the mission will be different. And some of them uh, increase or decrease the alert of aliens, which means that the strength level for the mission is higher or lower, so they will be more or fewer enemies. Regional limit of one means that there can only be one propaganda activity in a region at a time, and global limit of two means there can only be two propaganda activities active anywhere on the globe at once. It does only spawn in contacted alien regions though, so if you only have like three havens, it's probably not a very big deal that it's got a global limit of two. Once you get up to eight, now it's starting to get a little bit more complicated. This is a general ops activity. All of these guerrilla ops that we're talking about are, and you're allowed two general ops activities in a region. So if you get a propaganda in your region, it's going to stop you from getting something like a jailbreak, potentially. And it has a regional cooldown of 28 to 36 days. So that's from the time the activity is spawned, not from the time that you detect the mission, nor from the time when you finish the mission, but the time when the activity is spawned, which is probably going to be something like five days before you actually detect the mission. So once you've detected the mission, then infiltrated it for another five days, now you're looking at propaganda being able to spawn again in like 18 to 26 days, more realistically. Got a little activity description, sabotage a monument or neutralize a VIP in order to raise vigilance in the region by a total of four. Propaganda raises vigilance a lot. And we have a detection distribution. Now this is a little bit weird. Um, I have box plot statistics on this. So we have the minimum, which uh, is down here, maximum, median, lower quartile, and upper quartile. If you're a statistics guy, you'll know what that is. If you're not, I'll explain. And on the lower axis, we have how many level one rebels you have working. So at the start of the game, you'll probably have six. If you scan with the Avenger, that's worth four. So you'll be up to 10. And then as you work your way up, the red line, you can basically think of if you get unlucky, you'll detect it with something around this much time remaining. So in this case, it would be around four days remaining with the Avenger scanning and six level one Intel rebels. If you get average lucky, that's the yellow line, that's the median 
you will detect it with around five and a half days remaining. If you get fairly lucky, you'll detect it with around about six and a half days remaining. And the best possible detection that you could ever dream of getting is up here, the purple line, which is like nine days remaining, basically. So that's propaganda for you. And that's one of your girl ops. And how this relates to other girl ops is largely about the fact that you're only allowed two girl ops per region and that this has certain spawn conditions. So propaganda is not a very good girl op to get really. Generally, you don't care that much about spiking vigilance up really fast in a region. Can occasionally be useful, but in general, that's not a great reward. So you might want to get other girl ops. And so one thing you can do is you can deliberately fail this. You can send a rookie, pay 10 supply. Rookie goes in, dies. It's, it costs 10 supply and that's sad. And we're all very, I'm tearing up right now. But propaganda is gone, and now a different gorilla op can spawn, and that one might get you an engineer or something, which is a considerably better early game reward, potentially. Let's look at some other stuff so you can see what else is going on here. Here's political prisoners, which gives us the jailbreak mission, very common mission early in the game. And this one spawns from 0 strength to 12 strength, and from 0 vigilance up to 7 vigilance. So you can see that this is turning off not too long after propaganda does. Typically, vigilance goes up in a region as you're doing missions. So propaganda will turn off, political prisons will turn off. You're starting to run out of uh, girl ops that can actually spawn in a region once you're up around eight vigilance. Um, it has a regional cooldown of 14 to 19 days, so slightly lower one than propaganda does. By the time that you have detected it, infiltrated it, and actually done the mission, it's going to be able to spawn again, likely within a week. And you can see the detection distributions for it. You can see that this one's actually quite a lot harder to detect than propaganda. If you get unlucky with the six intel rebels and the Avenger scanning, you're only getting three days on this. Fortunately, with uh, jailbreak missions, you can send in like a solo shinobi and just hack the cell and try to get out. And so you have options available to you to deal with a mission like this if you detect it with low time remaining. So that ends up sort of being okay. And you can definitely see the value of placing a lot of rebels on intel early in the game so that you can bump these numbers up towards more reasonable ones. Let's talk next about High Value Prisoner. High Value Prisoner is one of the most valuable grill ops in the game. It turns off at 6 Vigilance, so the same time as Propaganda does quite early. And this is the one that's going to give you a scientist or an engineer early in the game. And like, that's a pretty cool thing, pretty big deal. So you're hoping to be able to detect these. But one thing you might notice is it's actually pretty hard to detect these. If you're unlucky with eight level one rebels, you're basically not even going to detect it before it expires. And even if you're scanning with the Avenger and have your six level one rebels working, um, an average detection is only three days. So you need a little bit of luck to be able to get an engineer or scientist out of these. And the fact that it's such a great reward is sort of balanced by the fact that there's a chance you won't be able to attempt the mission at all. Uh, so I've got three girl ops so far, and all of those go away as vigilance goes up in the region quite quickly. I'm going to show you three now, which are going to stick around. And so these are like the early game ones, and the other three are the ones that you'll see more and more later on in the game. Protect data is number one. This one sticks around until vigilance hits 13 in a region, which is quite a lot higher has that same 14 to 19 regional cooldown. Um, that's what Jailbreak has. And this one's eh, not, not the easiest to detect, but it's not awful either. There are lots of different things that Protect Data can be, and sort of the role of Protect Data is to help disguise other missions. Like the first Liberation Path mission looks a lot like a Protect Data. Um, also, the mission which leads you to a UFO, which is reinforcing the area, looks a lot like a protect data. Um, it also just sort of mixes things up. You could get a rescue VIP mission that was actually a protect data, it turned out, all along. So you can't be as certain about what's going on because of all the variety that these missions have. All right, let's look at logistics, which is going to be new in 1.2. You guys haven't played it yet. This one doesn't care about Vigilance at all. It turns off once you hit 13 Advent Strength in a region, something I have never seen. And no, that's not true. I saw it in like New Brazil. I had like 15. Those aliens love New Brazil, man. All right, but anyway, that's a lot of strength. It doesn't happen often. 
and logistics lets you bring a squad into an alien facility, clear the stuff out, grab the loot, and get back to evac before reinforcements show up. It's on a soft timer rather than a hard, hard timer. Um, and it's a lot of fun to play. It doesn't give you like an engineer or a scientist, and it doesn't give you an intel reward. So you might not really want to play logistics. And um, increasingly later as you get into the game, you're going to be getting logistics in your regions because you can't spawn all those other girl ops anymore. So don't feel frustrated by that. Understand what's happening and look to your newer regions with lower vigilance to get the stuff like the scientists and engineers and jailbreaks and intel rewards and stuff like that. And then the last uh, guerrilla op is, in my opinion, the most valuable. This is troop maneuvers. Troop maneuvers, if completed successfully, kills an advent strength point in the region, which is huge. It gives you corpses, alloys, illyrium, and supplies, and any loot that you get from the mission. It has a pretty easy time infiltrating because it actually has base infiltration time of five days instead of six days so your soldiers infiltrate faster which helps them get experience faster these are great missions and a lot of mid-game economy is about setting yourself up to detect troop maneuvers as efficiently as you can and beat them with your squad today on stream i had a situation where i went beat a troop maneuvers, do a retail, infiltrate and beat a troop maneuvers, infiltrate and beat another troop maneuvers in my three regions. And that was amazing. That's three advent strength points gone, three missions which are giving me corpses and materials, and a huge amount of experience for my soldiers with absolutely no downtime. And the reason I was able to engineer that situation is I understand how all of these guerrilla ops are spawning relative to each other. So the big thing about troop maneuvers is that you need four advent strength in the region. So as that advent strength is going up, don't like start freaking out and thinking, oh my god, how am I going to beat the network tower? That you do need to think about that too. But also be thinking, yeah, it's troop maneuvers killing time, because that that is a good time, and that is part of winning the mid-game with a strong economy for sure. Another thing about troop maneuvers is that this doesn't turn off until you hit 16 vigilance. So once you've cleared the three low max vigilance girl ops out of the region, the jailbreak, high value prisoner, and propaganda, you're going to be pretty clear to get troop maneuvers. And that's cool. And troop maneuvers has a regional cooldown, which is in hours because I haven't edited it yet. Whoops, it should really be in days. But that's uh, 20 days or so. And up to some other number of days. <laughs> so what you need to do with troop maneuvers is get your haven set up. As I hit strength four, start generating your troop maneuvers in them. Hit the troop maneuvers and then focus on whichever haven is going to get them next. You can have two going at once. So if you have like four havens, you have to be batting them back and forth. It's sort of like whack-a-mole. Get it done in one haven. It spawns another one. Get it done there. It spawns another one. Get it done there. It spawns another one. Get it done there. Because there are two going at once, sometimes you're going to have two detected at once with similar um, expiration timers, and you may need to send a B team. You may want to boost your infiltration in the first one with your A team so the A team can do the second one as well. There's a lot of play around working out exactly which soldiers are going to go on these missions in the mid game, especially as your soldiers are getting wounded and not necessarily able to go on every single one of them. And you also have to worry about retaliations because retaliations start being a big deal incidentally, exactly when regions hit strength four, pretty much. So as you're infiltrating these troop maneuvers, you may have to worry about exactly how are you going to deal with the aliens retaliating in a different haven or in this haven or trying to hit your uh, intel rebels in this haven, etc. It becomes a really interesting juggling act moving into the mid game, trying to generate these troop maneuvers in all your different regions and trying to beat them efficiently with your soldiers. Um, the only other note about troop maneuvers is that this graph is, is basically wrong because the higher advent strength there is in the region, you get like a base boost to detect it. So you can actually detect it with no rebels on intel at all, potentially. It requires an initial pool of five. So as long as you scan with your Avenger for like six hours at a haven every week or so, you'll be able to detect this with no intel rebels at all. But that initial pool of five, keep that in mind, put one rebel on intel for a couple of days or put a haven, put a 
Avenger at your Haven to scan for Intel for uh, 12 hours or something to make sure that you can actually get this. That's another really important thing to take away from all of this. And yeah, so that's Guerrilla Ops. I just dumped a bunch of information on your heads and it's a lot to consume and think about. And the best way, in my opinion, to do that is as you're playing a campaign, keep track of what missions are spawning in your havens and try to track the Guerrilla Ops. There are lots of other missions which aren't Guerrilla Ops, but some of them look sort of like them. Try not to get too confused by those. Try to track your Guerrilla Ops and try to find troop columns and get them spawning and get them beaten in a way that your A-team can handle. And I think that's a really cool exercise to do just in the first like three months of the game. You don't have to worry about liberating and stuff like that. You'll probably find that you're in such a strong position if you pull this off effectively that you can start to think about liberating. But it's just a really good lesson in learning to counteract the AI strategy and use your soldiers to fight with the resistance in a way that gets you a lot of good stuff. I can breathe again. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'm going to link the spreadsheet below the video so you can take a look and play around with the stuff yourself. And I have been John Ribs. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, the day that this video goes up on YouTube, I'm going to be doing a 24 hour charity stream for the Dream Project. And I would love it so much if you just stopped by my Twitch and said hi. You don't have to donate any money or anything. Say hi, share something you love about the world if you want. It's just going to be a happy time about connecting people and being good to each other. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm off to bed now and I'll be doing that tomorrow morning. Thanks so much, guys. And I hope the video has been helpful for you.